Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for February 2017. Got a couple new things to show you guys as well as the current progress on the layout. So a couple weeks ago I got these River Point Ford Super Duty trucks in, uh, both lettered for Canadian Pacific. I've been waiting for these for a long time and uh, I'm sure lots of you guys know how hard these River Point trucks uh, have become to find. So I got a few of them couple of high rails and a couple of the normal versions just because I don't who knows when the next time they'll make a run of these is so this is the non high rail version for Canadian Pacific and this is the high rail version with uh, the different rims that allow the uh, wheels to line up over the center of the rail pretty neat trucks we've been waiting for these for a long time and uh, I got these from PWRS and they just announced that they're going to be doing a F 350 and 450 versions with including the uh, CN maintenance away trucks with the big orange box so that's pretty cool looking forward to these these are a staple on anybody that models modern day stuff you gotta have quite a few of these high rail trucks um. and the other thing I got in uh, over the last month was a few of these Soltran North American Railcar Corporation 4000 cubic foot sulfur gondolas and uh, I'll show you a quick video. I had been meaning to build one of these sulfur trains for a while just because here in central Alberta we see them a lot. There's quite a few plants that these trains run out of and they run right to the coast on both CN and CP. There's not that many of these 4,000 cubic foot still in service, but there's enough on a train that, you know, it's about 30% or so on a unit train will still be these 4,000 cubic foot cars. The rest are the uh, CP bathtub or the old CP bathtub coal gondolas that they've changed over or Sultran bought. So this will be a staple on uh, both the CN and CP sides will be one of the mainline trains that I run. So there'll be a mix of these cars and the Intermountain uh, bathtub gondolas. They're a really unique looking car. You can't miss these gondolas when you see them. They're, uh, they stand out with those huge side ribs. Very noticeable on, on trains. They also have a lower profile than the CP bathtub gondolas. So this just shows you the special lining they, they put in these cars and uh, North American Railcar did a good job reproducing that. And this is to protect the interior, the steel car from the uh, corrosive effects of hauling sulfur. I'll show a couple prototype photos of the interior of these cars as well. So that covers all the new stuff I got over the past month, guys. Let's take a look at uh, the progress on the layout. So over here on the CN side, the past couple weeks, uh, I was working on boxing in this uh, utility run here, this vent and piping and stuff like that. Just preparing this section for drywall, and I didn't. It's finished. Uh, I don't have to go any further than this because the layout you can see. The CN side will come along this way directly towards the camera. So this will just allow uh, there to be drywall and right up to where the the lighting valance will go and make a really nice finished area but not have to worry about finishing 
above the layout where the uh, the lighting valence is going to hide all that and uh, keeping it open will also allow me to run wires and stuff in there in the future still have access to it so it's not totally blocked off by the drywall so this is the section we're kind of standing right in what will be the middle of Jasper Yard and you can see uh, how I ran those just basically created a big bulkhead here running up to the bottom of this beam and then directly across so that'll be drywall against here and on the bottom of this and then the lighting valence will cover up the section from the from the edge of the layout going this way so this section on the CN side is done now I just gotta finish wiring this these pot lights so uh, there's a few more pot light cans I have to put in and then wire this circuit and I'm still debating on whether or not I'm gonna put some pot lights up in here just for lighting like if you're down here at night or something it'll be nice to have the the aisleway lit you're still gonna get lots of light coming off the layout from the layout lighting and through the valance here but uh, I still wanted to have lights in the uh, aisleways I also was experimenting uh, using my module there uh, I want to have a table like a tall kind of bar style table sit in the center of this area so th this actually is really close to the size of the table I want to get that that module is five feet long but I want to get a six foot table so that you could have uh, three like bar stools on each side and that'll kind of be the main air sitting area over here on the CN side of the layout so I was just using the module to mock that up and uh, trying to decide where the the rest of the pot lights are going to go and how I could light that up properly so over here on the CP side same deal just boxing in more of these utility runs and getting it prepared for drywall this one is a little different because it's a really a really oddball shape got this angled doorway here so I kind of continue that on and then there's a curved section underneath here this is curved so I'm gonna run drywall right across here like that kind of make a make that solid ceiling and then you can see over on this side I left provisions to attach the uh, the lighting valence to so it'll be drywall and then the lighting valence will make the nice finished the lighting valence will go right up against here and that'll make that nice finished edge above the uh, above the layout and I just used the laser to match up uh, those brackets with the layout you can kind of start to see how it's going to take shape so we're just a little bit further on the CP side here we are at the entrance to the uh, points east reverse loop on the CP side just past Banff so you can see I finished uh, I, I boxed in around the end of this duct as well because this is going to be the uh, the dispatchers area and then continuing on through here I boxed in the ceiling as well and I didn't really have to over on that side but I wanted to have some somewhere to put lights in so this allows me to put the pot light cans up in that in that ceiling there and also maintain the like the level of drywall we're going through this is actually it looks way more open than it's going to be because once I finish the CN side the CN layout kind of follows the curvature of the CP like this and there's only about a it's a two foot walkway through here so this will be there won't be that much drywall there's way more framing than there will be drywall but the way the roof is you need to attach it to certain ends and so you have to kind of overbuild it but I just finished that yesterday so now it's uh, moving on to finish the lighting circuits through here like this will be a few more pot lights one kind of along this walkway through here wire that up as a new circuit and then uh, we will be ready for drywall in the aisles so the other thing I got done over the last month was on the CP side which has the sub the ply road sub road beds all done I went along and under everywhere under the sub road bed I put a one inch piece of plywood on edge and I glued it in there and the reason I did that was because I found that um, I have a lot of, I have two two foot spacing on most of the uh, cantilever supports and it's a little bit so on some places it's, it's thicker so what I was finding was on the especially on the places that were greater than a two foot span you could push down on the plywood sub road bed and it was actually there was quite a bit of give when it was just the normal layer of 5 8 plywood so by putting this stiffening piece along the, the whole length of those spans these are just like rock solid now so I did a few to test it and I liked it so much that I ended up doing the whole CP side like that and it took a long time 
is really time consuming because you have to let the glue dry for at least five hours before you remove the clamps. I only had enough clamps to do about six feet at a time, so I went around the entire layout and uh, did the whole thing like that. But I think it'll pay off in the long run having um, a really resilient roadbed like that. It's not gonna. There's no give at all now, so it, it won't. Uh, it won't have a tendency to uh, to sag or bend over time, especially when you're cleaning the track stuff like that, where you're putting some pressure on it. So you can see in the background, even the double track sections, I uh, I put them on too. I figured, why not? Right now, I can get at it really easily, and uh, in the future, it'll only get harder to do those. Especially since uh, to clamp these, you need to be able to to clamp onto the top of the uh, sub road bed. So if you went ahead and did track, you would it'd be really tough time getting those to uh, to clamp on to glue them on there. And also, you can't, or at least I wasn't able to do it. I was not able to use screws. Even pre-drilling them, you can't, they're too thin and, and plywood just has no strength in that direction. It's glue only on these. So I used a really solid polyurethane glue that I've been using on everything else. And uh, after doing this, I mean, these sections of sub road bed are really strong now. So you can see on the curve, I even did like the eight foot, or sorry, the eight inch sections in between all of the curve there. And then all the way around the whole layout, you can see those stiffening pieces. So I think that'll make for a really resilient roadbed going forward and uh, should be able to stand up to any any kind of abuse. So that wraps up everything that's new down here guys. I know it doesn't seem like I got much done but that doing those stiffening pieces and uh, framing those bulkheads like that is time consuming. I spent a lot of hours down here the last month and uh, Kind of gets a little overwhelming, like you uh, you spend all this time, and then we, once you get past the the benchwork phase and you start stop seeing the results as much, it's kind of harder to keep going on it. But I've been slugging on, and uh, I'm happy I've got it to a point now where I can finish up the lighting now, and uh, then it'll be doing all the little pieces of backing everywhere that I need to do to get ready for drywall, and uh, finally pull the trigger on on some layout layout lighting, which I'm going to use. LED strip lights. I finally decided what I'm going to do, but uh, before I do that, I got to get the the drywall in. So main focus now is to finish the pot light circuits and any little any additional boxing in I need to do, and uh, get the drywall contractor over here to do the drywall. So that's what I'll be focusing on over the next month. So that'll wrap up this layout update, guys. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.